everyone. I'm going to make it online tonight. Uh, as you know, tonight is the Feast of Simon. They have Simon. And we're going to read the history concerning it. All right? I uh, know it's a weekday. People are going to work. So we're going to try to be brief. Not too brief, but, you know, go through the history. All right, our forefathers. So we're going to start with chapter 1 Maccabees 13 and verse uh, 1. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 13, 13, verse 1. Now when Simon heard that Tryphon had gathered together a great host to invade the land of Judea and destroy it, and saw that the people was in great trembling and fear, he went up to Jerusalem and gathered the people together. So who's Simon? Uh, let's see who's been reading. Uh, hmm, Rotbar, who's Simon? Simon is Jonathan's um, younger brother. Okay. Well, who, who's more and more? Uh, from um, Matthias, his father. Very good. Matthias, his son. All right, Matthias, five sons, and this is one of them, Simon. All right, real quick before we go, let's go to chapter one real quick. The gifts be on Simon. This is the day of Simon. So you might as well learn about him. Briefly, first Maccabee, no, first Maccabee chapter two. Verse 1. First Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 1. In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simeon, a priest of the sons of Joarib, from Jerusalem, and dwelt in Modin. Yeah. And he had five sons, Joannan, called Cadus. So Mattathias, okay, had five sons. Joannan, called Cadus, go ahead. Simon, called Thassi. Mm -hmm. Judas, who was called Maccabeus, mm -hmm. Eleazar called Averon, and Jonathan, whose surname was Aphis. All right, so Mattathias had five sons, okay? What we're focusing on tonight is Simon, uh, who's called Thassi, Thas all right, on the side. Let's go back to 13 again. No, if I'm sorry. Um, let's see what their skills were. Maccabees 2. When Matthias died, he gave, he gave them all instructions on who will be in charge. 1 Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 64. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant, and show yourselves men in the behalf of the Lord. So this is Matthias giving his sons charge before his death. Okay, because Matthias is on his way out. So he's giving his sons instructions on what they should do when he leaves the world. Go ahead. For by it shall ye obtain glory. Mm -hmm. And behold... I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. So Simon was a man of counsel. He was the wise among the brothers, the wise one. Go ahead. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. Being a leader unto you. So the parents, our forefathers had understanding on which child to choose. They knew their child's spirit. They knew this child was the wise one. This child was the strongest one. He had their spirit. So likewise with y'all. You have kids. You got to know your child's spirit and know um, how to deal with them based on that spirit. In this situation, Simon, Matthias knew that Simon had wisdom. He, he had a leadership skills. Okay, go ahead. As for Judas Maccabeus, he had been mighty and strong, even from his youth up. So Maccabeus always showed that he was a strong man, young man. He was a strong one, a tough one. Some of y'all got family like that. Some of y'all have family who you got a tough one in your family, a cousin or a nephew that's tough. They got to fight. You understand? Matt, Maccabeus had that skill. He could fight. He was a fighter. Simon was a smart one. He was the, the brains, and Maccabees was the brawn. He was smart as well, but Simon was the wise one, wisest one. Go ahead. Let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people. So his job is to be the captain, the fighter of the, of the um, family. Go ahead. Take also unto you all those that observe the law, and avenge ye the wrong of your people. So he said, take ye all those that observe the law. So the company you keep are those that observe the laws. Those are your friends, those are your companions, those that observe the law. And this truth, this truth is a battleground, this truth is a war. All right, so you must make sure that you, that you choose those for the war who are, who are, um, what's the word, acceptable. All right, and keep these commandments. Go ahead. Recompense fully the heathen and take heed to the commandments of the law. Go ahead. So he blessed them and was gathered to his fathers. Go ahead. And he died in the 146th year. And his sons buried him in the sepulchres of his father at Modin. And all Israel made great lamentation for him. For so he passed away. So now, let's go to Simon now. 13 again. Now we're dealing with Simon now. 
He's dead. He's Gone. dead by now. Judas died by this time. Yep. So now Simon's in charge. Go ahead. Start from the beginning. Yeah. Stop from, no, stop from verse um, 3. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 3. And gave them exhortation, saying, Ye yourselves know that know what great things I, I and my brethren and my father's house have done for the laws and the sanctuary, the battles also and the and troubles which we have seen. So he's reminding them how they fought the battles for Israel. They were always fighting for their people. And he's reminding them, he's giving them, he's trying to encourage them. Because this Greek name Trifon is coming against us. And our people would ordinarily catch fear. So it was Simon's job to take his brother's place. Remember, Judas is gone. So he had to keep them in good spirits, keep them strong, keep them encouraged, and not get and not be fearful. Because the fighter, the strongest of them, was gone. So Simon says, listen, remember, how me and my brothers fought for y'all. So don't get no, don't catch any spirits. All right, so it says exhortation, meaning encouragement. He was building them up. Go ahead. Verse 4. By reason whereof all my brethren are slain for Israel's sake, and I am left alone. So at this point, he's by himself. He's the last man standing. Because all of them got killed. One by was five of them, all of them got killed one by one. Go ahead. Now therefore be it far from me that I should spare my own life in any time of trouble. For I am no better than my brethren. So he's saying, listen, I'm not afraid. I'm not going to sit here and walk up and, and, and not fight the battle for Israel. To survive, if they all die, I'm going to die too. So this man was not nothing he played with. He was not weak and scared. He was a fighter as well. But he was the wisest of them. Go ahead. Doubtless I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary, and our wives, and our children. So Simon, our forefathers were always for the defense of the laws, and their people, and their wives, and their children. They were family men in the Bible. Don't, don't, let, don't let no one fool you into thinking otherwise. They were, these were family men also. They knew when to deal with family, and when to deal in times of war. In this situation, with spiritual warfare. We deal with the spiritual warfare, and we deal with family. Okay, wives, it says, read again, the top. Verse 6, doubtless I will avenge my nation. And I will fight for my nation against the Greeks. Go ahead. And the sanctuary. Uh -huh. And our wives. And our children. And our wives and our children. Go ahead. And all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of very malice. So these heathen are gathered together to destroy us of evil, evil, and wish ill will upon us, to hurt us, to harm us, to harm us, our wives, and our children. Go ahead. Now as soon as the people heard these words, their spirit revived. See that? Why is it saying that? Why is it saying spirit revived? You know, so what do you mean faint hearted? You don't use any type of words. Scared. Yeah, thank you. You were scared. You were afraid. The people were afraid because Judas, the old, all his brothers, understand. All the mighty men of, of the Mad Thias line were killed off. Simon was the last man standing, so they were still like, listen, if all your brothers are going to die, you, you might die too. He had to build them up. Their spirits were dead. He had to revive them because they were getting fearful. Yeah. Read it again. They had Jonathan hostage at this point. Yeah, they, yeah, they had Jonathan hostage at this point. But he, so he said, read verse 5, verse, verse 4. He knew something. Verse 4. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 4. By reason whereof, all my brethren are slain for Israel's sake, and I am left alone. Because Jonathan was held prisoner. He knew he wasn't going to get him back. He knew Jonathan was gone. He was going to be killed too. He knew it. So I said, I'm alone. Because Jonathan wasn't dead at this point. He was kidnapped, but he knew. I'm not getting him back. Right. He's going to die too. The people are scared. Jonathan's kidnapped. Three of them are dead. He's last man standing. So the people are shook. They were afraid. Go ahead. Verse 5. Now therefore be it far from me that I should spare my own life in any time of trouble. For I am no better than my brethren. I'm, I'm willing to die for them. I'm willing to die also. Just like they did for you. Go ahead. Doubtless I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary and our wives and our children. Mm -hmm. For all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of very malice. Of very evil intent. Go ahead. Now as, now as soon as the people heard these words, their spirit revived. They felt better. So okay. He's not, he's not fearful. He's going to fight for us. There's someone left. Go ahead. And they answered with a loud voice, saying, Thou shalt be our leader instead of Judas and Jonathan thy brother. So they realized what he was saying about Jonathan. You, you'll be our leader instead of Jonathan because Jonathan wasn't coming back. He was not coming back. Go ahead. Fight thou our battles, and whatsoever thou commanded us, thou wilt do. That will we do. That will we do. Go ahead. So then he gathered together all the men of war, and made haste to finish the walls of Jerusalem. And he fortified it round about. Go ahead. Also he sent Jonathan, the son of Absalom, and with him a great power to Jop, who Joppy. Ca to Joppy, 
who casting out them that were therein remained there in it. Mm -hmm. Got it. So Tryphon removed from Ptolemaeus with a great power to invade the land of Judea. And Jonathan was with him in war. Because Tryphon had, kid had kidnapped Jonathan. He was coming to attack us while he held Jonathan hostage. Tryphon's a Greek um, general. Go ahead. <clears throat> 13. Verse 13. But Simon pitched his tent as at Adida, over against the plain. Uh -huh. Now when Tryphon knew that Simon was risen up instead of his brother Jonathan and meant to join battle with him, he sent messengers unto him, saying, Whereas we have Jonathan thy brother in hold, it is for money that he is owing unto the king's treasure, concerning the business that was committed unto him. So when Tryphon got word that Simon was coming to fight him, he said, Listen, understand. We have your brother, we have your brother um, held here because he owes the king some money. But it was all a lie. It was all a scam. Okay, deceit. Go ahead. Wherefore now send an hundred talents of silver and two of his sons for hostages. He said, send a hundred talents of silver and give, give me two of his sons. Go ahead. That when, that when he is at liberty, he may not revolt from us and we will let him go. Meaning, give us a hundred talents of silver and his two sons so that way he'll pay us back. We'll hold them as a ransom. We'll hold them until he pays us the whole the full debt. But it was all, once again, it was all a lie. Go ahead. Hereupon Simon, albeit he perceived that they spake deceitfully mm -hmm. unto him, yet sent he the money and the children, lest preadventure he should procure to himself great hatred of the people. Why is it saying that? Why is it saying that? Hatred of the people. People would think that if, if he doesn't pay the ransom with, along with the children, that that will cause the death of, of Jonathan. Exactly, that's exactly what he's saying. He's saying, if I, I'm dead if I do, I'm dead if I don't. If I don't pay the money, they're going to think that I caused them to kill him. If I do pay the money, they're going to kill him regardless. They'll kill all of them. So now he's stuck, in, he's stuck now. He's like, damn, this is, this is, a, this is a bad decision. This is a really hard decision. Go ahead. Verse 18. Who might have said, because I sent him not the money and the children... Therefore, is Jonathan dead? And that's what he was thinking. If I don't send the money to people, people are going to say, you didn't see, if it wasn't for you, you'd still be alive. You should have sent it. Go ahead. So he sent them the children and the hundred talents. Howbeit, Tryphon dissembled. Neither would he let Jonathan go. Ripped them off. Took the money, kept the money and the children, and kept Jonathan also. Go ahead. And after this came Tryphon to invade the land and destroy it, going round about by the way that leadeth unto Adora. But Simon and his host marched against them in every place, wheresoever he went. I mean, wherever he, wherever he went to um, attack the city, we were there, guarding. We were well fortified. Go ahead. Now they that were in the tower sent messengers unto Tryphon, to the end that he should hasten his coming unto them by the wilderness, and send them victuals. You send food. Go ahead. Wherefore Tryphon made ready all his horsemen to come that night. But there fell a very great snow, by reason whereof he came not. So he departed and came into the country of Goliath. Gilead, go ahead. Gilead. And when he came near to Bascama, he slew Jonathan, who was buried there. So he killed Jonathan. He got close enough, he killed Jonathan, and, and he buried him there. Go ahead. Afterward, Tryphon returned and went into his own land. Killed Jonathan and went back home. Go ahead. Then sent Simon... And took the bones of Jonathan his brother and buried them in the in Moden, the city of his father. He found out where he was buried and he got, took them out and buried them with his fathers, with his father and his brothers. Go ahead. And all Israel made great lamentation for him and bewailed him many days. Simon also built a monument upon the sepulchre of his father and his brethren mm -hmm. and raised it aloft to the site with hewn stone behind and before. So like like a uh, like a tombstone. Names before and names written in the front and names written in the back for people to see. For people to see. Go ahead. Moreover, he set up seven pyramids, one against another, for his father and his mother and his four brethren. So we had knowledge and built the pyramids. It was not used for paganism. The Egyptians used our skill and said we're going to build. It was a grave area. It was a, those are grave sites. So the pyramids are tombs. But the Egyptians said, "Oh, I'm I'm a guy who started deifying themselves and made it something else." It was, it was built as a grave site, okay? So we knew how to build pyramids. He brought that skill to Egypt. Go ahead. And in these he made cunning devices, about the which he set great pillars, 
And upon the pillars he made all their armor for a perpetual memory. Mm -hmm. And by the armor ships car, that they might be seen of all that sail on the sea. This is the sepulcher which he made at Moden, and it standeth yet unto this day. Uh -huh. Now Tryphon dealt deceitfully with the young king, with the young king Antiochus, and slew him. He killed King Antiochus, not the one you know you're talking about, it's the one of his children's great, 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 great grandkids. Go ahead. And he reigned in his stead and crowned himself king of Asia, and brought a great calamity upon the land. Uh -huh. Then Simon built up the strongholds in Judea, and fenced them about with high towers and great walls, and gates, and bars, and laid them up victuals therein. Uh -huh. Moreover, Simon chose men, and sent to King Demetrius, to the end he should give the land an immunity. Meaning, because uh, me meaning that a land of peace. Immunity means that he was going to have, built, uh, have a, a treaty with another, with another Greek. Okay? With Demetrius. Go ahead. Because all that Trifon did was to spoil. Meaning all Trifon did was to get, get, steal, steal, and rob, conquer, and plunder. Go ahead. Unto whom King Demetrius answered and wrote after this manner. King Demetrius unto Simon the high priest and friend of kings, as also unto the elders and nation of the Jews, sendeth greeting. The golden crown and the scarlet robe which ye sent unto us, we have received, and we are ready to make a steadfast peace with you, yea, and to write unto our officers to confirm the immunities which we have granted. And whatsoever covenants we have made with you shall stand, and the strongholds which ye have builded shall be your own. Now he made a, 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 a um, covenant. A, a covenant with Demetrius. He was, he's using wisdom. He's using another Greek who has power to, to side with him against another Greek. So Trapa can't overpower him. Go ahead. Verse 39. As for any oversight or fault committed unto this day, we forgive it. And the crown tax also, which ye owe us. And if there were any other tribute paid in Jerusalem, it shall no more be paid. He's saying for this covenant, we're going to forget, we're going to forget everything. All the, all the wrongs of the past between us, we'll forget it. It's for this covenant. Go ahead. And look who are meet among you to be in our court. Let them be enrolled, and let there be peace betwixt us. Mm -hmm. Thus the yoke of the heathen was taken away from Israel in the 170th year. So I mean, I mean the Greeks coming against them is stopped. So there was a lot of Greeks, not just Trifon, many Greeks coming against them. But this one, he said, okay, now we made a treaty with this group. There's less battle, less war, less war now. There's more peace now. We have less enemies. Go ahead. Verse 42. Then the people of Israel began to write in their instruments and contracts. In the first year of Simon the high priest, the governor and leader of the Jews. Mm -hmm. In those days, Simon camped against Gaza and besieged it round about. He made also an engine of war and set it by the city and battered a certain tower and took it. So at this point in time, Simon is, is still going to war. He's conquering. Go ahead, against the, fighting against the Greeks. Go ahead. And they that were in the engine leaped into the city, whereupon there was a great uproar now, in the city. Now, sorry, the engine, let me remember what the engine is. The engine is, is like Lord of the Rings. When they had the, 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 the battering ram hitting right. the door. Boom, boom. Then it would go in. The thing would open up, they come out of the battery and they were going and going to the city. That's what it is. That's, that's what the engine of war is. All right, Lord of the Rings, that movie's based on what the scriptures are talking about. Like the elephants carrying the people. That's all in here. That's the, the war of the Maccabees. That's the, that's going into. The, a lot of that Lord of the Rings stuff comes out of Maccabees. A lot of, you read it, the elephants, they fed them certain things to make them, make them lose the arm. They call them something berries. And the elephants would go crazy and they would start fighting. They had to fight. Remember, Elias saw stab one of them and it fell on top of them. It was the same thing. So the engine of war is going into when it would be a battering ram, it would hit, knock the door down, they would run, and they would run inside. Like the kind of like uh, um, the Trojan horse, thank you, the Tro like, like um, Troy, just like that, except it was, it was in the battering ram. All right, go ahead. Verse 45, and so much as the people of the city rent their clothes and climbed upon the walls with their wives and children and crowd, cried with a loud voice, beseeching Simon to grant them peace. So the heathen's families are begging us for mercy. He was overthrown. He was overthrown. These heathens. Go ahead. And they said, "Deal not with us according to our wickedness, but according to thy mercy." Now they want peace. Now, go ahead. So Simon was appeased toward them mm -hmm. and fought no more against them, but put them out of the city and cleansed the houses wherein the idols were, and so entered in, into it with songs and thanksgiving. That was our, that was our land. 
Okay, that was all in it. They had four or five for themselves. We kicked them out of there. Okay? And we, and we, took, we, we were happy after that. We celebrated. Go ahead. Verse 48. Yea, he put all uncleanness out of it and placed such men de- there as would keep the, the law and made it stronger than it was before and built therein a dwelling place for himself. Mm-hmm. They, they also of, of the tower in Jerusalem were kept so straight that they could neither come forth nor go into the country, nor buy nor sell. Wherefore they were in great distress for want of victuals, and a great number of them perished through famine. Then cried they to Simon, beseeching him to be at one with them, which thing he granted them. Because what happened was he put sanctions on them, where they couldn't get out and they couldn't come in. They were starving. They said, please, please, because remember this is our land. We're taking, we're taking our land back. A portion of Jerusalem back. So Simon surrounded them where they couldn't get any food to come in or food out or anything or get or leave. So he was starving them out. So they said, okay, please, please have mercy on us. Okay? He started pressing them, pressing them. All right? So they begged for mercy once again. Go ahead. And when he had put them out from thence, he cleansed the, he cleansed the tower from pollution mm-hmm. and entered into it the three and twentieth day of the second month in the hundred seventy and first year with thanksgiving and branches of palm trees, and with harps and cymbals and with vials and, and hymns and songs, because there was destroyed a great enemy out of Israel. So Simon put in a lot of work. Okay, he managed to get us peace in the land for that period of time, and we got more portion of our, more of our land back from the heathens. Okay? That, that the father land with their dumb idols. Go ahead. He ordained also that the day should be kept every year with gladness. He ordained now what? Read again. Verse 52. He ordained also that they that, that day should be kept every year with gladness. Go ahead. Moreover, the hill of the temple that was by the tower he made stronger than it was. And there, and there he dwelt himself with his company. And when Simon saw that John his son was a valiant man, he made him captain of, captain of all the hosts. And dwelt in Gath and Gazara. All right. So, he, so at the end, he made his son a captain, like his brother was. Okay, John. Now, let's go back to go back to verse six again. Verse six. Yeah. First Maccabees chapter thirteen, verse six. Mm-hmm. Doubtless I will avenge my nation mm-hmm. and the sanctuary, and our wives and our children, for all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of very mouth. So. I'm going back to that point because, again, during warfare, our forefathers were warriors and they took care of their family ones, okay? To show that the, that, the, that the mindset never changed. This is before the Maccabees. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 13. Therefore set I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. Because during this time, we were rebuilding... Jerusalem, we were getting it back. Kind of like what happened with the Maccabees. They were rebuilding what was destroyed by the Greeks. During this time, we were rebuilding what the Babylonians destroyed. Okay, and the enemies, we were given free, we were given liberty to rebuild Jerusalem back. And the heathen got word of it and were trying to come against us. So we, while we're trying to build, had to arm ourselves, to defend ourselves while building at the same time. Read the next verse. Verse 14. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord. Remember, so he's saying the same thing that Maccabees said, Simon said, I mean Simon said. He's saying, he's building them up, exhorting them. Read again. And I looked, and I and rose up, and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives and your houses. See that? So it's the same spirit. That spirit never changed. Our people always were there for their family, for their for their people. There was no the hell with the women or the hell with the children. That's not in the Bible. It's not in there. Okay, our forefathers were warriors and they took and they knew what was important. Okay. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 43. Now this is going into uh-huh. who is this? This is Judas. Yep. This is a Judas star fighting. That's what he said. Remember, Simon said the same thing. Nehemiah said the same thing. Now we're going to go into what Judas said. Okay. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. See what they said? 
Let us restore the decayed estate of our people. Why did it say decayed estate of our people? Because they were destroyed by the Greeks. A lot of them were following the Greek customs. A lot of them were, 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 we were poor, hungry, thirsty, because they robbed us clean, took our land over. So he said, let's restore what was destroyed. Stay, the same mindset must be on us today. Let us restore the decayed estate of our people. Read again. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people, mm -hmm. and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. So now we're not doing this, no longer we're doing this physically, we're doing it spiritually now. Jump up to verse 55. And after this, Judas ordained captains over the people, even captains over thousands and over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. So these are the deacons, these are the officers. This is, this is setting up structure now, order and structure amongst us. To do what? To restore the decayed state of our people. Because to do that, you have to set up structure and order. Go ahead. But as for such as were building houses or had betrothed wives, or were planting vineyards, or were fearful. Or were what? Or were fearful. Or were fearful. Go ahead. Those he commanded that they should return, every man to his own house, according to the Lord. So if you were fearful of that, he said, stay home. Don't bother coming. We don't need your help. Those of you who, are getting, who got married, who are building homes, planting vineyards, you are working, you have work to do, or are scared, you stay home. This truth has no room for fearful people. None whatsoever. <clears throat> at all. Our job is to go to war. Spiritually against against the against 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So we verse 4 again. Verse 4, I'm sorry. 4 again. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I mean, we're not fighting a physical battle. As in the swords or guns or knives, none of that. No terrorist activity going on in here. No bombs. None of that necessary. Read again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal. Go ahead. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The mighty through God means his words, his commandments, his Bible. Go ahead. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Our people who are in this condition are in a, are in a what? Decayed estate. You're in a decayed estate at this point. That's why we got we to cast down their imaginations. We got we to gotta, um, bring down every high thing that exalts itself against God and the knowledge of God against this Bible and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of this Bible. Because they'll, they'll bang the other nations. They'll bang America, religion, politics, foolishness. So their, their minds are going to remain decayed until then. Go ahead. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So you'll be ready to do that when your obedience is fulfilled. Because many will say, ah, you, that, that's just talk. All oh, that's talk. A lot of people say that. Let's get 1 Corinthians um, 1. Nah, all you guys do is talk, talk. Well, the most high word does the work. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. For us preaching this Bible to them, to them that are going to die, it's foolishness. Ah, that Bible stuff. Ah. To them who are going to die, this, us preaching this word is foolishness to them. Go ahead. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. See that? But unto us who are saved in this truth, repent it, it is the power of God. That's what, that's what helps us do what? To go into warfare. Tear down imaginations. Bring our people into obedience of Christ. Go ahead. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. That's what Simon did, physically. Our job is to do that spiritually. That's our job. Go ahead. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the wise? Go ahead. Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? See that? Because the wisdom of this world is nonsense. If you go against any politician or any of these so-called civil rights leaders or pastors, we'll destroy them. We'll cut, shut them down. What the hell are you talking about? We'll make them look like fools. 
That's why it says, where is the wise? Where is the, the scribe? I mean, the, the teacher. Where is the dispute of this, of this world? Who can fight for this world and, and justify the actions of this world? No one. Because it's against the Bible. And it says, Who have, not made, have not God made the fool, foolish to wisdom of this world? For this world's wisdom is nonsense. A lot of our people, they boast in this foolishness. Gay rights, they boast in that. Sports, hip-hop, they boast in that. It's garbage. There's no wisdom in any of that. None. <coughs> Go ahead. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. The world by wisdom does not know God. What wisdom? Wisdom of this world, which is foolishness. They do not know God. This world teaches them to do what? Go against God or that there is no God. Period. Go ahead. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. See that? It pleased God by the what? The foolishness of preaching. It pre pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. Meaning to us, we look like fools. Them, them Negroes is crazy out there preaching that Bible stuff. We look like fools to them. Okay, go ahead. To save them that believe. See that? But it says to save them that believe. Our job is to go out there and save them that are going to believe. So to those who think this word is foolishness, they're not believers. They're meant to be destroyed. But to those who believe, or those of you who are well in here, we're online. Okay? Um, uh, give me um, um, 1 Corinthians 15, last verse. Because to some, this is just talk. Ah, it's just talk. You need to go, this is running your mouth. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's what we're supposed to do. Read it again. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Be stand strong in this truth. Don't go nowhere. Don't be scared, fearful. Otherwise, you stay home. That's what steadfast means. Go ahead. Unmovable. Unmovable. Not fearful. Not, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know. I have doubts. Am I really Israel? Am I be white? That's the, um, that's you movable. Something wrong with you. Go ahead. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always remaining in this Bible. Not in sports. Not in hip hop, politics, religion. But abounding in the what? The work of the Lord. Go ahead. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. See that? Your labor is not in vain. Your labor does not go in vain. The most high's word is going out whether you believe it or not. Whether you see it or you don't see it, it is getting done. The job is, the work is getting done. People are calling us from all over the world, Canada, all out of state, all in state, all out of the country. The word is not going out void. It's getting done. That's why we're trying to get ourselves on television programs to get this truth out there. Push it, God, push. Press toward the mark. Okay, against, against, um, a made a, against crazy eyes. Because we are, the, the wicked outnumber the righteous. The wicked outnumber the righteous tenfold. All right, Ephesians. Because it says, to them that perish, foolishness. Because to us walking up, standing outside, a bunch of so-called niggas standing outside with funny clothes on, teaching the Bible. These niggas, they like this. This is madness. We're jokes to them. Just like to the Greeks. The Greeks had thousands, hundreds upon thousands in their military. Somehow, like, what, a thousand? There was crazy odds against them, and they still won. 1 Corinthians 4 and 9. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 9. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last. The last, because if you remember in history, there are many movements prior to Israelites. You had, uh, well, during Israelites, but the, 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 you had the SNCC, you had the Panthers, you had the Green Berets. You had many movements that were out there at the first. Many black people trying to fight abolitionists. We had many movements going on amongst black folks that were trying to trying to get things moving, get our get our get our so-called civil rights or privileges. I call them civil privileges. All right, and the Israelites are seen as nothing. Ah, uh, Muslims out there, Muslims out there. They was um bringing this, uh, they was out there pushing their doctrine, trying to build Israel up, but it, it fell, it fell. At the end, of it, it was it was nothing. It was gone. It was done. Okay, read again. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. For I think that God had set forth us, the apostles, last, yeah. as it were appointed to death. So the apostles are set up last. 
and, th and their mission was going to lead them to death. A lot of them. Go ahead. For we are made a spectacle unto the world. We are made a what? A spectacle unto the world. What's that mean, a spectacle? We are made a spectacle unto the world. Bezalel. <clears throat> they were, they were uh, made to look like outcasts, like a, like a spectacle, like something that people make fun of. Exactly. Uh, a mockery. We are made a spectacle unto the world. Go ahead. And to angels. Leaders. And to men. Like Sharpton. Sharpton mocked um, Officer Yan at school. Right. He mocked the hell out of him. Made the school laugh at him. Laughing to scorn. Okay? So it says, me are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels. Meaning, not angels up there. We're not spectacle unto them. They see every damn thing. We're not angels. It means leaders. Leaders. Go ahead. And to men. Verse okay. 10. Mm-hmm. We are fools for Christ's sake. See that? But we are fools for Christ's sake. You call us dumb. That's why I said earlier, the foolishness of preaching. It says we are fools for Christ's sake. We look stupid or like spectacles for Christ's sake. Go ahead. But ye are wise in Christ. So we are wise in Christ. Go ahead. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable. But we are despised. See that? We are weak to the world those in the world. You niggas, man, please. That Bible. What you gonna do with that Bible? That's all talk. But it says, you are strong. Yeah, read again at verse 10 again. We are fools for Christ's sake. We are fools for Christ's sake. Go ahead. But ye are wise in Christ. But we are wise in Christ. Go ahead. We are weak. In the world, we're seen as weak. Go ahead. But ye are strong. But in the spirit, we're strong. Go ahead. Ye are honorable. We're honorable in the eyes of the most high in Christ. Go ahead. But we are despised. We're the most hated thing on earth. We're despised. Read on. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger. In this present hour, even in this present hour right now, we both hunger, go ahead. And thirst. Uh-huh. And are naked. Oh, what that sound like? We both hunger and thirst and are naked. What's that mean? They walk around butt naked? You shall serve enemies and, and what? Hunger? No, you missed this. And hunger, thirst, and the nakedness. And the one of all things. All right? And so he saw them. You're in captivity to this very... Day, Paul is saying. Read it again. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted. And eventually, guess what? People are going to fight us. We're going to be fought against. Don't be scared. Be buffeted means get beat up. Go ahead, jump. Go ahead. And have no certain dwelling place. You're going to maybe, maybe even be on a run. You're going to try to chase you out your house, get you kicked out. Don't be fearful. Go ahead. And labor. Working with our hands. See that? That's why he said earlier, that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Read again. And labor, working with our hand, with mean, our own hands. I mean, we have jobs. They had damn jobs. They worked. Go ahead. Being reviled. Being hated. Spoken evil of. You're a cult. You're a bunch of crazy maniacs. Bible, bu Bible bullies, that's they call us. Go ahead. We bless. We what? We bless. Being spoken evil against, we bless. We teach you anyway. Go ahead. Being persecuted. Being persecuted, locked up, killed. Go ahead. We suffer it. We have to. Go ahead. Being defamed. Oh, being what? Defamed. Spoken evil of. Being defamed. Go ahead. We entreat. We still teach y'all. Some of y'all here is like, them niggas crazy. Now y'all crazy now. You are sitting here with us. That's a cult. Now you sitting here. I'm in a cult now. <laughs> it's the same. That's what happened. We entreat y'all. Y'all here. Y'all here. Okay, read it again. Being defamed, we entreat. Go ahead. We are made as the filth of the world. Wow. Niggas. Spits. We are made as the filth of the world. I'm going to give y'all a piece of for that. Give me Jeremiah 42. Watch this. This is the word he uses. I like this word. Jeremiah 42, I think it's 18. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 42, verse 18. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and my fury have been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. But what? For us breaking the commandments. Go ahead. So shall my fury be poured forth upon you when ye shall enter into Egypt. Meaning what? And into slavery, into bondage. You'll land your captives. Go ahead. And ye shall be an ex... Yeah, that's the word. Execration. Execration. Look that word up. You shall be in execration. What's that word mean? This Bible uses some crazy words, man. You look at them words, you be like, wow. God said that about you? About us? Damn. Execration. A detestable thing. A what? 
a detestable thing, right. the act of cursing, a curse dictated by violent feelings of hatred. Wow. Utter detestation expressed. Utter detestation, right? Yes. I mean, utterly hated. We are up detested. We are despised, niggas. You see a nigga moving, they move out, they move, they move away. They go to the neighborhood, they move. They don't like you. The nations don't like you. Most I said you are an execration. You got something? Test Bad. utterly. To, to hate utterly. Go ahead. Abominate. No, no, before that, there's something else. Abhor. Abhor means to hate. Go ahead. To curse. Uh, abominate? You said something else. Yeah, it said to detest utterly, abhor, abominate. Abominate. I mean, you are an abomination. They don't even want to be around you. Sit around you, drink around you. That's why you have to fight for that. Fight for civil rights. Can I eat with you, a white man? Can I drink with you? Can I go to your schools? Can I use your bathroom? Can I use your bathroom? Use your bathroom? That's execration. Go ahead. To be damned and denounced. Wow. To be what? Damned and damned denounced. Damned and damned? Damned. D A N D A N N. Oh, man, that's, that's the word I'm looking for. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 25. But early in Maccabees, those that hate their own people. Remember that. Read. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Our job in, in meekness means utter subjection to the Bible. Whatever it says, utter, utter submission to the Bible. That's what meekness means. Read again. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Our job is to teach those that hate themselves. Go ahead. If God preadventure, if God perhaps maybe, go ahead, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. No, as well. If, he, if the Most High wants to wake them up, go ahead, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. That's our job. So recover them out of the what? The snare of the devil. So our job is to teach y'all that you may what? Read again for the top verse one twenty six. I missed something. And that they may recover themselves. Stop. You know what he said? Recover themselves. Mm -hmm. Our job is to teach you to acknowledge who you are according to the Bible and keep these commandments. Your job is to recover yourself mm -hmm. after that. We can't do it for you. Some of y'all in here is like, oh, man, you sure you saw the devil? I don't know. Because he ain't recovering himself. He didn't recover himself. So he's out in the world again. Read again. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. That they may, that they may. I mean, there's a possibility they won't. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Go ahead. Who are taken captive by him at his Who will. are following his commandments, which is following America. Getting tossed around the flood, drowning in the flood. Get Jump to um, 3, verse 8 now. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8. Almost done. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses. Those are them witches that turned their staffs into snakes that Moses, that Aaron's staff ate up. This is their Greek names in Greek. Read again. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Our people who oppose themselves resist this truth. The defaming of many. Those who defame us are those who resist this truth. Go ahead. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate. Concerning the faith. That's their problem. That's why we're that's why to us to, to us for them we're a gazing stock. We're a spectacle to them. Because what it says we're men of corrupt minds and reprobate, meaning void of understanding concerning the faith. Go ahead. But they shall proceed no further. But they shall proceed no further. Go ahead. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. As those witches also were in Egypt. Likewise, the same way those witches are shown to be right. faith and phony and nothing, their power, their witchcraft is garbage, likewise, this truth is going to be the same way. It's going to reveal all the evil of our people. And they're either going to repent or try to kill us in the process. And that's up to you to, to either you're going to deal with that or not. Shalom, brothers, and shalom, sisters. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. As many of you are finding out, Christianity has destroyed our people. For the past 400 years, we have been indoctrinated in lies. Those lies of Christianity have not benefited our people in the least bit. Many of you know this. So, like Christ said in John chapter 3, verse 3, he said, Except ye be born again, you shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. 
So in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven which shall be established on earth, you must be born again. What does that mean? Many of you always quote that, but you don't understand what that means. When you go to 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34, Ezra said, Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding, meaning subdue all that you have learned here in Babylon the Great, it says, and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive. What does that mean? Meaning you must be taught all over again, taught your nationality, taught why it is that we as a people went into slavery here in America. Who are we? What is the mystery of why this country, these nations have changed our nationality? We here at Israel United in Christ, we have classes seven days a week, three times a day, all for what? For your learning, for your edification. You will learn things never taught to you before. You will learn history, you will learn prophecy, and more importantly, you will learn the dynamics of what you need today to survive as a people. One third of Israel is prophesied to repent of their sins and come into this truth. So now we need you brothers and sisters, come join us here at IsraelUnite.org. Go to our online classes and register. This is for you. This is for the redemption of the 12 tribes of Israel, brothers and sisters. I hope you understand that. Isaiah chapter 62 verse 6 says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. And brothers and sisters, we are not keeping silence. So come join us. Help, help us build this truth. Donate to us so that we can keep this truth on and on. Push it forward. Help us get this gospel out. Because Christ said, when this gospel is taught throughout the earth, then shall the end come. So with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom.